Hi everyone, I'm Catherine Woodfine. I'm the author of the Sinclair's Mystery Series and the Taylor and Rose Secret Agent Series, and I'm delighted to be taking part in Waterstone's Golden Time. Today I'm going to share a little bit from Peril in Paris, which is the first book in the Taylor and Rose Secret Agent Series. In this book, it's 1911, and we rejoin Sophie and Lil, who are the heroines of the Sinclair's Mystery Series. Um, but now the young detectives have an exciting new career as spies working for the British government's mysterious Secret Service Bureau. The extract that I'm going to read you today, though, is told from the point of view of a brand new character, Princess Anna. Anna held her breath as she crept along the hall towards the governess's bedroom. It was past midnight and the castle was whisper quiet, the passageway made strange with shadows. In the dark, the antlers of the stuffed animal heads on the wall, the rusting suit of armour, even the painted shield with the arms of the Royal House of Wilderstein seemed to shift into new and sinister shapes. A long, thin crack of yellow light was visible at the bedroom door, and Anna moved towards it, her bare feet soft on the chilly stone flags. She felt excited. She knew that she was not supposed to be out of bed late at night, creeping around the castle, but it was rather thrilling to be slipping along the passageway in the dark, in her nightgown, without even her bedroom slippers. She was certain that the governess was up to something, and that was why she was here, creeping towards her bedroom door at night. Some people might have thought twice about spying, but Anna didn't. She liked to know things, and she had a talent for finding things out, especially the things she wasn't really supposed to know. Like many of the rooms in Wilderstein Castle, the governess's bedroom was quite bare and cold. The stone walls were hung with cross swords and tapestries of hunting or battle scenes. Miss Carter did not look like she belonged at all, sitting beneath one of the tapestries writing a letter. The governess seemed quite different in her dressing gown, with her hair falling loose over her shoulders. She was not wearing her spectacles again, Anna realised, stepping a little closer, hardly daring to breathe. She watched intently as Miss Carter put down her pen, tucked her letter into an envelope, and then got up and went over to the bed. She bent down and reached under the bed, drawing something out from beneath it. Anna saw that it was a small leather attaché case, rather battered and stuck all over with luggage labels. As she watched, Miss Carter unlocked the case with a little key, which hung on a chain around her neck. Anna leaned forward, eager to see what, what was inside. The governess was taking something out of the case, a small object which she dropped into her dressing gown pocket. Then she locked the case, pushed it back underneath the bed and made for the door. Almost tripping over her nightgown in her haste, Anna scrambled back down the passage. From a safe spot behind the rusting suit of armour, she watched breathlessly as Miss Carter padded out of her room and down the hallway. Where on earth was she going at this time of night? She hurried silently after her, feeling more thrilled than ever. To her astonishment, she saw the governess's figure approach the door of the Count and Countess's sitting room and then go swiftly inside. Anna scampered quickly down the hall, creeping as close to the sitting room door as she dared. The door had been left ajar. Inside, the room was quite dark, but Miss Carter had lit a small lamp and as Anna peered in, she saw that it had cast out a circle of light, illuminating her like an actress on a stage. As Anna watched, she saw Miss Carter open the Count's desk and begin rifling through his letters and papers. The governess's lips were moving, as though she was muttering to herself, although Anna couldn't hear what she was saying. After a few moments, she took out a single sheet of paper and laid it flat on the desk under the light. Anna stared and stared as the governess took out the object she dropped into her dressing gown pocket. It was small and round and looked rather like a silver watch. But as Anna watched, she held it close to the paper. There was a loud, distinct click. Miss Carter wound the watch and held it out again. Click, went the watch, the mechanism loud in the night. Except it wasn't a watch at all, Anna realised. It was a camera. The governess was photographing private papers from inside the Count's desk. She let out a little gasp of surprise and Miss Carter looked up sharply. She couldn't see Anna standing in the dark of the hallway, but at once she turned out the lamp, plunging the room into blackness. Frightened now, Anna darted as quickly as she could back along the passageway. But before she could reach the safety of her room, she collided with someone coming the other way, someone tall and solid. She looked up in alarm to see that she'd slammed into a footman, a new one who she'd never spoken to before. He looked down at her with an unpleasant sneer on his face. Why are you here, running about in the dark, he hissed. You ought to be more careful by yourself at night, princess. Anna stepped back at once, alarmed. Footman never spoke to her like that, 
they always bowed respectfully and addressed her as Your Highness. She was so surprised she couldn't say a word. Meanwhile, the footman only gave a mocking little snigger. Just then, to Anna's enormous relief, Carl appeared around a corner. Your Highness, what are you doing out of bed in the cold and without any bedroom slippers? Whatever would her ladyship say? He clucked. He gave the new footman a doubtful look. You can go. I'll take care of, your hi of her highness, he informed him. Then, more reassuringly to Anna, come along, back into bed for you. But even when Carl had brought Anna back to her own bedroom and she was tucked up safely in her own bed again, sleep felt very far away. There was no doubt about it, she thought, as she lay wide awake in the dark. There were strange things happening at Wildestein Castle. Strangest of all, she was now quite sure that the new governess was a spy. I hope you enjoyed that little taste of Peril in Paris. You can carry on reading at home if you would like to find out what happens next. And if you enjoy the story, do look out for the sequel, Spies in St. Petersburg, which is out now, and the third book in the series, Villains in Venice, which will be coming out in August 2020. That's all from me for now. Take care and happy reading.